is uh, is inhibited by your student debt. And so, um, you know, the if you look at uh, student student debt terms, they're typically in the eight to twelve percent range, and um, and higher on the grad student um, side. And if you're doing that over ten years. Um, really, you could save thousands of dollars if you just trim that interest rate down, even just a couple points. Um, and our average interest rate is about 4%. Um, and that's basically because you are structuring these terms with people that you know. And, um, and they're not looking to get rich off of you. They're looking to make a little bit more than their savings account. Um, which is, uh, you know, those are underperforming. And so if they can make a little bit more than their savings account and help you out, you can save thousands of dollars at the end of the day. Um, you know, there's a win-win that we're trying to create there. Yeah, and it definitely sounds like that's something that we need more of is those kind of win-wins. I was just curious, do you have any idea, is this something that is just strictly a problem within the U.S. or are other countries having this same kind of problem? Because I'm, when I talk to people from other places, it seems to me like they're doing a better job with trying to do ways to help their students. And I'm not just talking about socialist countries, even some of the capitalist countries seem like they've found ways to actually help their young folks and even some of their millennials better than we have. I was just wondering what your perception of was that. Yeah, you know, it's a, it's a good question. It's kind of hard to answer just because there's so many different systems um, around the world. And, uh, you know, in Europe, a lot of those uh, programs are, are relatively cheap, if, if not free. Um, but also quality is not, you know, the same as, as the U.S. They may disagree with that. Um, and then in other places, you know, it's more so structured like an apprenticeship than kind of the university structure that we have here. Um, in, in my opinion, I'm, I'm a proud graduate of UNC Chapel Hill. I was a Robertson scholar and spent some time at Duke as well. Um, I'm, I'm a fan of our university system. I think there are certain – players and members that um, take advantage of the system and you have a lot of these for-profit universities um, that have gotten themselves in trouble, gotten students in trouble, and really uh, balloon the cost of uh, education on the whole in the entire country. Um, and I, I'm a firm believer after going through a boot camp uh, kind of apprenticeship type program that um, these these trade schools and these new age, um, more modular, you know, 10 weeks, 12 weeks, maybe 12 months um, tops, these types of programs that are skilling you up or um, getting you the necessary skills that you need for a particular job, I think is the wave, the wave of the future. As we move closer and closer to kind of the gig economy where everybody's working two or three different things, um, everybody's got kind of a side hustle, um, or you just find your work from three different employers because the employers, you know, maybe don't have uh, the same types of benefits packages that, that we've had in the past. I mean, we're, our economy is headed that direction, and as you have more and more of this kind of gig work, I think you're going to see a lot more people um, go into these shorter-term, you know, if it's coding, if it's marketing, if it's culinary, whatever it might be, these shorter-term programs and less and less of kind of your traditional four-year degree. Um, because what often happens, especially as it relates to engineering with my background, you know, you're teaching these things in a traditional university setting that might not be as applicable in a really fast-moving industry. And so going through kind of a boot camp that's going to teach you something that's boots on the ground, working at Facebook or, uh, or Amazon or whatever else, is going to really prepare you to come in and, and be able to, you know, contribute day one. Now, obviously, the theory and kind of the, the computer science uh, piece of that you can't get in 12 weeks. Um, but as I said, I think as we go more and more towards this gig economy, it's more and more like a meritocracy. What, what have you done for me lately? What can you do for me now? Um, and I think, I think you'll see a lot more creative programs out there. And one of the things I know you've been a part of, and uh, I think that it's one of the things that you're very proud of, is the fact that uh, it seems like, particularly here in the South, I'm guessing from probably Florida all the way up to Virginia and D.C., there's a lot of these, what you just related to, business um, incubator kind of programs, co-working programs, and things of that nature, whether it's like the Iron Yard Academy, whether it's uh, Union House, whether it's um, 
WeWorks or some of these other things or even what American Underground has done. So it seems to me that that mm-hmm. also seems to be part of that trend that you're talking about. Oh, most definitely, most definitely. Iron Yard um, was a coding boot camp um, back a few years ago. They had a, a nice run, and um, there have been lots of coding boot camps that have sprung up since. And, uh, again, I'm, I'm bullish on that. There are programs like Hack the Hood and, um, and Code the Dream that are doing some great work in, uh, in our communities and getting folks uh, ready to pursue that next step in in engineering, and uh, I think that's a, to be honest, I think that's a big uh, uh, leveler of the playing field. Uh, if you can move into these industries that are really fast moving and more uh, of a meritocracy, I think you can see kind of a leapfrog uh, of advancement and wealth generation for uh, communities of color. Um, so I'm I'm bullish on it. And and you mentioned American Underground. Uh, American Underground and, and the other Google Tech Hubs are really unique. You know, they are um, they are coming at it from a different angle. We work as its own beast. It's more of a real estate uh, company than anything else. Um, but American Underground and others, uh, Union Member House, are, are kind of approaching it from a different angle. Um, can we can we have the programming and can we have the the scholarship and the training and the education to help these businesses grow? Um, and be in a place where they can learn from each other. I mean, we're, we're a tenant of American Underground downtown at their um, Main Street campus, and it is the best thing to be able to walk down the hallway and ask somebody who's maybe a year ahead of you, um, you know, hey, how did you do this email marketing campaign? Hey, how did you uh, find your, uh, your senior engineer? You know, how did you solve this business model problem or – you know, did you pitch this investor and, and can you share that deck with me? You know, that kind of learning and the speed of learning is uh, is huge. And I think all these types of programs that you mentioned, Mark, are um, are in that same vein. Because one of the things is it seems to have changed, and maybe it's just me reading things wrong, but you just alluded to it to some degree, is that historically speaking in the entrepreneurship world and in the business world, it was very, uh, for lack of a better term, cutthroat, meaning basically, you know, you get yours and I'll get mine. But it seems to me that a lot mm-hmm. of businesses are doing what you just said. They're doing more cooperation kind of work. I mean, yeah, there might be two people that are in the same thing, maybe two coding companies, and they're actually going after some of the same markets and everything. But it does seem that there's, in that sense, I mean, there may be some other issues that we're not doing all that well in, in business. But in that sense, it does seem that there seems to be more cooperation among businesses than it might have been, say, even before uh, – my birth year, so like back in the uh, 50s and the 40s and what we kind of hear as being the height of capitalism when people think about like the Rockefellers and even some of the people that might have even brought our current person that's sitting in the White House into power because some of that stuff might have been going <laughs> up in the 60s and the 70s and everything. But it does seem like there's a lot more cooperative kind of things within the business world. Now, is that a misread on my part or would you agree that that is actually what is happening, that the millennials are being more cooperative in the business world? Yeah, it's a uh, it's a really interesting question. Um, you know, I think there's probably a, a confluence of factors. Um, my initial reaction, as you're saying that, is yes, I agree. Uh, I think a lot of business are uh, are, are more collaborative uh, these days. Um, now, uh, they're also quite cutthroat. You know, I think if you're looking at um, the startups that are trying to go from Zero to Hero in Silicon Valley or in New York or, or what have you. Um, it's a quite cutthroat culture. Um, but I think in general, it's one of the easiest times to start a technology business, a scalable business. Um, it's one of the easier times to start any kind of small business. Um, kind of the, the cost of getting something off the ground, uh, whether it be a food truck or whether it be a software business, uh, has gone down. And so, um, you know, I think there are a lot of folks that <clears throat> are willing to get in and, and give it a try. I think the interesting piece of at least the industry that I'm in is that if you're in a big enough market, there's there's plenty enough to um, to kind of share. And a lot of people, at least in software, are, um, are not, you know, holding fast and firm to um, – you know, all of their – there's lots of different types of IP, right? There could be 
um, you know, your hard and fast IP that you might want to patent. But there's also just kind of human capital um, and and kind of trade secret type stuff. And I find that when you're in these incubators or accelerators or, or what have you, everybody's moving 100 miles a minute and, uh, and trying to grow their businesses as fast as they can. Um, but uh, I find that a lot of people are often um, willing to reach back and, and help out and, and share things that they learned and, and whatnot. Now, if it was somebody in FinTech uh, that I would go and ask, hey, how did you do this? Maybe I wouldn't get that next meeting. Um, but I think there's a, I think there's a lot of co- collaboration cross industry um, and in the same kind of stage and phase of your business. Well, and um, how do you think we're doing in terms of doing a lot of this entrepreneurship development within our school system? Because that's one of the things that I'm always concerned about is that we have a lot of growth. And yes, I agree that the colleges are doing a wonderful job. But I'm wondering, do you feel that we're doing enough job in terms of reaching out into the younger people, the high school kids and the junior highs, and just making sure that our youth that are coming up have an understanding of this rich careers that are available. Because as you mentioned before, Haiti had a very rich um, African-American business community, and I do think that there's some more businesses that are coming up that are of various minority backgrounds that are kind of almost growing like a new kind of Haiti environment now. They may not have a central location the way that old Haiti did, but they may be more scattered around and not necessarily have one center home the way that the old Haiti district was. But it does seem that there is some growth, but I'm wondering, are we doing enough job in terms of reaching out to our youth so they understand some of these careers that are available? Or do you think that some of the uh, youth, whether they're here or whether they're where Dean is in New Jersey, are kind of not feeling as much the opportunities are where they are at in their high school level? Or do you think that you're seeing enough of that kind of development? Yeah, it's a it's a good question. I'll I'll uh I will answer, but I want to flip it back on you. I mean, have have you seen any um any programs, any good models uh in the school system uh that you can point to? Uh, not that I can think of. I mean, I've seen some people that have tried to do some business programs and they tried to, you know, incorporate entrepreneurship within their, some of their business. I don't know that they necessarily, right. and I know that the code in the iron yard has reached into the high schools and sometimes, but I don't know that I've never necessarily seen one that is uh, sustained. That's what I was looking for. It's actually sure. not the, kind of like one-off kind of events. Because I do see a lot of events that might be one-offs or things of that nature. But, I mean, just taking the Research Triangle Park as an example, and it's one of my beats with even some of our media, meaning minority media, is that we -hmm. have this tremendous amount of talent like yourself, like other people that are doing great work. I can even name companies, Glaxo, uh, Red Hat, things of that nature that are different Mm -hmm. minority communities. And I don't know the last time that I saw a story on say somebody like you or somebody like um, somebody else that I would have to do research to figure out who they are, but they're doing some of this kind of innovative work, not just in the mainstream media, but in our own media. And I'm sitting there going like, well, mm-hmm. if you're supposed to be our media, these media should be covering all of our aspects, not just the things that are negative, but you should be covering some of the positive things that are happening in our community as well. Right, right, right. Yeah, no, um, I definitely agree with you. I've, uh, I've seen a, a, a couple things. Um, I'm not um, really kind of uh, ear to the ground on on our school systems uh, just yet. I don't have any kids at the moment, uh, so I'm not as plugged in as, as I could be in those areas. But um, I, I, I've seen two examples on kind of both bookends, uh, if you will, of kind of uh, K through K through 12. Um, and on the – on the younger end, I, I was actually just a part of this event um, this past weekend. It was a children's business fair um, that was run uh, just outside of the Durham, Durham Farmers Market uh, this past week, um, and it was a it was a cool, really really cool event. A uh, few local companies kind of sponsored it, and I believe um, there was a, a new. Uh, type of school model that was sponsoring it as well, um, kind of in the vein of of, uh, of a Montessori um, type of program. Um, but this this particular business fair um, was really impressive. There were 37 different companies represented uh, by little entrepreneurs from six to 13, six years old to 13 years old. Um, and their businesses were multifaceted. I mean, we're talking about 
uh, the Brown Sugar Sisters was my favorite. These two um, African American sisters 